we're going to show how to do quantify raising using lambda calculus. So let's say we have a sentence like Trevor loves everybody. And we know something about these quantified phrases from our model theory using sets. And that is when we want to evaluate the sentence, we have to take our DP and we have to create a new node. So we would be going up from the S and what we'd be doing in the old system is doing a new S taking this determiner phrase, moving it up into that position. And then in its place, we would leave a determiner phrase with a trace and we'd give this an index to connect them. We're going to do something a little bit different here because if we think about types, uh, Trevor loves T1 is going to be type T and then S is going to also be type T. And if we think about everybody, it would force this to be a type TT and this is not what we want. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to do our indexes just a little bit differently. So we're still going to move everybody up, but we're going to introduce this thing called a lambda phrase. You can call it LP or lambda P. And this is going to have the index number. Then we're going to create the new S with the determiner phrase where everybody gets moved to. So what we're going to be able to do at this place is we're going to be able to do abstraction to make this an ET. And then we're going to be able to fit this in with an ETT to force this to be a T up at the sentence level. So S's will always be type T's and we can see how we can do this. So in this final structure, let's just take a look at what the nodes would even be. So just going through the tree, everyone loves T2. So, so Trevor loves T2. Our DP is just gonna be X2 since we're gonna assign all of our traces a variable. Loves, at this point we know what loves is. So when we get up to the VP, we're gonna be looking at lambda X dot X loves X2. And this might be a little bit confusing because we're using X and subscripts X. So for the sake of the example, uh, I'm just going to change these lambda X's to lambda Y's. So lambda Y dot Y loves X2. Now with Trevor, we're going to call this T. So this sentence is going to be true if and only if uh, T loves X2. Now at the LP, what's going to happen is this two is going to tell us which variable we can abstract over. So this means that now we're going to get lambda X2 dot T loves x2. So this is where the binding has occurred. So now we've found the object with what we're being raised with. So now what we can do is we can apply this as normal. So uh, in terms of the meaning at one, this is going to be true if and only if for all x, t loves x. So uh, what this would look like everybody uh, you're looking for a lambda p dot for all x, uh, p x in this case. So when we apply what we have, uh, this is what we're going to get. So it's true if for all x, t loves x. So Trevor loves everybody, and that's what we would expect. Now, what if you want to do two bits of raising? And we know this is where we get ambiguity. So if we have a sentence like some dog bit every hammer, it's either going to be that there is um, a particular dog out there that bit every hammer, or um, it could be the opposite scope reading. But we're going to go with some dog bit every hammer, where some dog takes scope over every hammer, which means there's a particular dog that bit every single hammer out there. And we're going to see it's exactly the same as before. So we're going to go straight up to the sentence level for T1 bit T2. So this is going to be one if and only if x1 bit x2. So this is because we're going to replace t1 with x1 and t2 with x2 and the verb is going to be as expected. So at the lambda phrase, what we can do is we can now extract our x2. We can abstract over it. So lambda x2, uh, x1 bit x2. Now when we get to every hammer, we can think about what the meaning of this is going to be. We're going to be looking for a predicate p that for all x um, if X is a hammer, then we're going to get P X out of it. So in other words, uh, for all X, if X is a hammer, then something bit X. So when we plug this into our sentence, what we're going to get is for all X, X one bit, and then now we're going to have X replacing our X two when we plug that in. Uh, and this should be true if and only if. So now we have a true statement, but we need to abstract over the X one as well, because X one is going to be some dog. So at the LP now we can do our Lambda X one abstraction for X one bit X, but we have to remember to have our all X out front. So Lambda X one for all X 
x1 bit x. Now it does look a little bit messy, so maybe we should be choosing y's here, but that's fine. Uh, let's do that for some dog. So for some dog, what we're going to get, if we remember from our other videos, is lambda p dot exists in x. This will be dog x and px. But because we already have for all x, I don't want to use exists in x because then we're going to get some variables mixed up with our binding. So let's change this to y. Now, when we plug in our dp and our lp together at our top node, we're finally going to get one if and only if we have exists a y out front. So if there exists a y, that y is a dog. And, and then we're going to put everything from before, for all x, uh, x and pull on, our, our y's are replacing our x1's. So this would be for all x, y bit x. So this end is this true if there is some y such that y is a dog and for all x, y bit x. But specifically, we're not actually done here because we have to put in that other information that if x is a hammer, then y bit x. So we kind of used a mix of predicate logic and natural language to show this, but this is how we can do quantifier raising in lambda calculus.